Hello everyone and welcome to this short video about the repair of a switch mode power supply. This power supply I'm talking about now is the BN44-00445C PB6F underscore WVL. This is a switch mode power supply from a Samsung 59 inch plasma television, namely the Samsung PS59D530. In this video, I'm not going to do or to show, to show you the actual repair of this power supply. I'm just going about, um, to tell you some of the detailed information about the circuitry in here, especially the power factor correction or PFC circuit, which you see here, because this is the section of the power supply that will fail most likely since it is directly on the line side. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because there are some information out there about repairing this section, but they mostly cover only the replacement of the outer or the bigger parts of the PFC circuit. And they didn't give me enough information to repair my board since on my board there were several other problems with it. And so I decided to reverse engineer some of the circuitry and to give you guys some information I found out. Before I go on, there's some safety notes. Um, as you know, this board is a power supply directly connected to the mains. So depending on where you live, it will hold up to 240 volts AC. And even if you disconnect it from the mains, these capacitors over here may be charged to up to 400 volts DC for quite a long time. And both of these voltages may kill you. So be really careful. You are following along at your own risk. And if you're not sure if you're confident enough to do this repair or to work with those voltages, Leave it alone, let it be done by someone else or get a new board. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you a little bit about what you see here. So the, uh, let's say, outer part of the PFC circuit. And to explain that, I did a little circuit diagram drawing here. You first of all need only to concentrate on the red part. So the power factor correction circuit is basically a boost converter taking the rectified mains. The mains rectifiers are sitting up here. So they are outputting, depending on the phase, between zero and 230 volts DC. And the boost converter consists of a coil, a diode, a switching device, and a capacitor on the output. The coil is this uh, transformer over here. The diode is one of the diodes inside this package the switching MOSFET would normally be soldered in here but it's missing in my board and the output capacitors are these three big electrolytic capacitors over here and there is one more part which is a 20 milliohm 5 watt power resistor which is this white ceramic block over here to sense the current and you might have noticed that this power factor correction circuit has two identical um, parts so it consists of two different boost converters, which is for stability and control reasons. So um, I'm just going to focus on the left one here and the right one is exactly the same. So all the parts and all the values are the same. So um, normally what happens if this section fails is that this switching MOSFET gets overloaded and shores out. And if you're lucky, then it shorts out only between drain and source. So the fuse over here blows. So you replace the fuse, you measure which one of these MOSFETs is broken, you replace it and you're good to go. But in most cases, and also in my case, that wasn't sufficient because there's a lot more to this section than you see on the upper side of the board, which is shown here. So this is the underside, the, the, lower, uh, the bottom side of the PCB of the PFC correction of the PFC circuit. Um, normally there is a 20 pin SMD IC sitting here, which is missing on my board sadly. And you see some more active circuitry around here and around here. Um, as I already told you, there are two uh, exactly complementary boost converters, one over here and one over here. So this section is identical to this section. And I'm now returning to my uh, little circuit diagram here. And now we're going to concentrate on the green parts because the green parts are the parts on the bottom side of the board or the SMD stuff you see here. 
So this green circuitry represents what you see in this section on the board. It is the uh, gate driver for one of the MOSFETs. It is running on a lower DC voltage, around about 20 volts DC. I'm not sure about the actual voltage it's running at, but let's just say it's about 20 volts DC. Then there is a control signal coming from the IC. And there is also a feedback pin on the IC um, on, on this 20 milliohm power resistor to measure the current. And what's happening here is the control signal coming from the IC is fed through a 10 ohm resistor into a push-pull power stage consisting of an NPN and PNP transistor. These are the two parts you see over here. And then the output of these transistors is fed through a 20 ohm resistor, which is this part into the gate of the MOSFET. In parallel to the 20 ohm resistor, there is a double shot key diode and a 4.7 ohm resistor, which is this part here, and also a little inductor just for stability reasons. And one more thing I didn't show in my drawing is this 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor. So if there's no signal coming from the IC or there's something wrong with this circuit, the gate is normally always pulled down to ground, so the MOSFET is switched off and there's no current flowing at all. So what might happen now is the time the transistor fails, the main MOSFET fails, it doesn't only short from drain to source, but it also shorts from drain or source to gate. So we get basically a three pin jumper here. And this results in the mains voltage up to 330 volts being present on the gate pin. And that is a big problem because all this green circuitry is only designed for logic level or as I said up to 20 volts DC. And the moment you get like 300 volts in here you can destroy nearly every part in here. So for example you might destroy the transistors because they are only weighted for about 20 volts. You might destroy the diode because it's only weighted for 20 volts. You might destroy the resistors in here because they are quite lowish value. So if you apply high voltage to it, result in a, it will result in a quite high current which may instantaneously destroy some of these resistors. And last but not least, the voltage might go through all this circuitry into the IC and destroy the whole IC as it happened in my case. And also, if this MOSFET fails, you might get the full, AC, uh, full rectified AC on the upper side of this resistor and this means that it's going through this feedback resistor and also this feedback resistor might, bl might blow. So if you have a power supply which uh, has failed due to um, a short in one of these MOSFETs, you need to make sure um, that all of this driving circuitry is intact. And the way you do that is, um, for the resistors it's simple, you just measure all the values and make sure they match. I'll show you a list later on to, uh, in which you can check if your values are correct. Um, these inductors, they should measure, if you check them in ohms, like one or two ohms. You just need to check that they are not, um, not open. Then you need to check the diodes. Um, the anode of these diodes is the pin 3 and these are double shot key diodes so there is a diode from pin 3 to pin 1 and another diode from pin 3 to, win, uh, to pin 2. Um, actually if you measure them measuring them in circuit you cannot differentiate between those two diodes but that's usually no problem just measure one diode of this circuit and one diode of this circuit and if they show round about the same value you're good to go. Then you need to check the two transistors in here. This lower one is an NPN transistor. Um, the base is pin 1. So what you do is you put your plus lead, uh, you put your multimeter in diode test mode, put your plus, the positive lead, on the gate, then the negative lead on pin 2 and on pin 3. And in both of these cases, so pin 1 to pin 2 and pin 1 to pin 3, you should get a normal diode like around about 0.5 or 0.7 volts. If one of these diodes is not uh, showing around the section, so if it's showing open or if it's showing short, then this transistor is bad. 
The same goes for the PNP transistor, but in that case you have to take the negative lead, so the black lead, put it on the pin 1 base, and then first put the positive lead on pin 2, and then put the positive lead on pin 3, and again it should read about 0 0.5 to 0.7 volts, if not there is something wrong with your transistor. Um, sadly, there is no real method to tell if the IC is good or bad. But uh, I would suggest, if you don't know, just replace all the other parts, replace the main switching MOSFETs, replace all the resistors and all the little transistors around here. Um, if your power supply then starts up fine, then the IC is good. And if the IC is bad, then usually nothing, nothing happens because there is no switching, so there won't be any voltage buildup. So the power supply will just sit there and won't generate any loose voltage. And if this happens, then you know that your IC is faulty and you need to replace it. So um, here is the list I talked about with all the parts uh, I found out inside this PFC section. First of all, the resistors. The first three here um, are the slightly bigger 805 packages. These are the ones around here or respectively around here. Values are 4.7, 20 ohms and 200 ohms. All the other resistors are 0603 packages. Most of them are around the IC itself or around these transistors. Um, the double shot key diodes I talked about, so this part here and this part here, um, are labeled B3. If you look that up in some SMD parts list, you find that it's a 24, a 20 volt 1M double shot key diode with a common anode. Sadly, I wasn't able to get the exact replacement parts, so instead I got the BAS70-06, which is a 70 volts 0 0.02, 0.2 amps double shot key diode. Uh, I don't think this is a problem since this is just uh, on the way to a gate pin of a MOSFET so there won't be any actual DC current to, to uh, load the diode so this should work fine. Just make sure it's a common anode and that this common anode is sitting on pin 3. So as I said one diode from pin 3 to pin 1 and the other from pin 3 to pin 2. Then you're good to go. For the transistors as I said, the lower one is an NPN, the upper one is an PNP. The NPN is labeled BHD, the upper one is labeled B BGD. Uh, sadly, I wasn't able to find any coherent information in any SMD parts lists to, to find the exact parts uh, these labels represent. So I just chose uh, two replacement parts for the NPN, the BCX70H and for the PNP part, the BCX71H. These are just generic uh, transistors. One thing you should make sure of is that they are at least 30 volts rated, since this circuit is running at around about 20 volts, so you want to be sure. And you should uh, use fast transistors here, because this is a gate driver, and the slower your transistors are, the more losses you'll get in the actual MOSFET and in the coil. And since this is a multiple 100 watt power supply, you shouldn't have too many losses here. Then the control I see itself is an R2A2011AB PFC control I see. Um, you need to get this exact part since there is no matching replacement. And this comes in, of course, a 20 pin SMD package. Then these two last lines represent the big parts on the on the top side of the board. So the diode here is a double diode, a rectifier diode rated for 600 volts, 20 amps. The original part is a Fairchild semiconductor F20 UP60DN in a 20220F package. Make sure it's the 20220F package and the F stands uh, for that there is no metal plate on the back side of the TO220, so you don't have to worry about any isolation here, you just can put it directly on there. Um, the same goes for the two main MOSFETs, QP802 and QP804. These are Infineon CoolFETs, um, 2R190C6, 200 volts rated and FETs. Again, as I said, in the 20220F package. 
I would strongly suggest that you get the exact same parts while uh, if replacing these parts since they are matched for this specific application so they matched specifically for this voltage for this inductor for the current and so on and so on if you ever can't get them make sure they are probably rated so at least 400 volts but usually 400 volts is not sufficient should be around 5 to 600 volts rating for the diode and for the feds and continuous current at least 10 or 20 amps since this is a quite high power supply okay so this is all the information i got out of the repair of this section i hope you found some of it interesting and i wish you all the best luck with your repair thanks for watching